How's it going everyone? It is Skullzy here with the latest and the greatest gaming news. I'm finally feeling better. I'm not sick anymore. The divines cured my rock joint or whatever the heck I had and we're going to be returning back to those daily uploads and I'm going to be streaming again here very soon. More updates on that in the days to come. But for today I want to talk about yet another Phil Spencer interview where they talk about future Bethesda and Xbox exclusivity. I guess it's more like Bethesda Microsoft exclusivity at this point but anyway we're going to break this all down today together. It seems like ever since this Microsoft and Bethesda partnership was announced, Phil Spencer has been doing interview after interview and has always been asked about this Bethesda stuff. I'm sure he is super tired about hearing about it by now, but he should totally understand it because this is like one of the biggest gaming partnerships or acquisitions or whatever you want to call it that has ever happened in the history of gaming. And this is an interesting interview. They talk about a lot of interesting things here. Phil Spencer talks about future acquisitions acquisitions and how Microsoft plans to push Game Pass. Phil Spencer talks about how Xbox lacks strong E-rated content or more specifically games for a younger audience. He would like to see more single player games from Microsoft's first party studios and of course, they talk a little bit about that Bethesda Xbox exclusivity. The article in question is where we're going to start today's adventure and video and I'll go ahead and I'll put a link to it down in the description below. I highly suggest you read this interview because it is pretty interesting. However, I know most of you are here for that Bethesda news so that's what we're going to be focusing on in today's video, and that Bethesda information is right here. Now first off, I am not familiar with who Game Reactor is, but in order for them to score a Phil Spencer interview when he is like so busy doing all of these interviews, they must have some notoriety and credibility, so yeah. But the specific question that they ask Phil Spencer about this Bethesda stuff is this one right here. And they say, so the Bethesda deal was monumental and took most of us by surprise. What do you hope to gain from this long term? And I'm talking more broadly here than simply Bethesda titles making it to Game Pass on launch day. Phil Spencer responds by saying, First of all, I would like to say that we haven't acquired ZeniMax. We have announced our intention to acquire ZeniMax. It is going through regulatory approval and we don't see any issues there. We expect early in 2021 the deal will close, but I say that because I want people to know I'm not sitting down with Todd Howard and Robert Altman and planning their future. Because I'm currently not allowed to do that. That would be illegal. Your question is completely completely inbound, but I get a lot of questions right now. Is this game exclusive? Is that game exclusive? And right now, that is not my job in regards to ZeniMax. My job is not to sit down and go through their portfolio and dictate what happens. In terms of what I want long term, I want those amazing studios to create the best games they have ever created. That's when Todd and I sat down and had a discussion. Todd and I have known each other for years and years and we talked about this partnership. We looked each other in the eyes deeply, we held hands a little bit, and we said, okay, what are we really going to do here? And he said, I want to build the best games that I've ever built and I want the support of Microsoft to be able to do that. And I say the same thing about the studios at Arcane and id Software and Machine Games and Tango Gameworks and Zenimax Online Studios and so on. I want them to do the most amazing work and support them in doing that. So yeah, basically this is another PR response by Phil Spencer, only this one is a little bit interesting because the wording he used here in this first paragraph was a little foreboding. Like he didn't say that he didn't ever plan on sitting down with Todd Howard and dictating their actions, he just said he wasn't allowed to do that right now. I mean, you would think that if there wasn't going to be much future Bethesda and Xbox exclusivity, that Phil Spencer would have responded by saying, I don't plan on dictating their future. Not respond by saying, I can't talk about how I plan on dictating their future right now. That's a very strange choice of words by Phil Spencer. But the main point of his response, which is something that he's kind of been shifting his responses towards when asked about Bethesda and Microsoft exclusivity is that he isn't legally allowed to really go into details right now because like he has been saying in the in like the last few interviews this deal isn't finalized it actually has to be approved by the US government because the US government tries to prevent huge monopolies from happening in any business industry at all because monopolies are usually not good for businesses and kind of prevent any new businesses or startups from happening or from having there be a fair standardized regulation of any sorts in the industry but Microsoft does seem to think that this Bethesda and Microsoft partnership or purchase or whatever it is, in this case they do call it an acquisition, Phil Spencer does seem to think that this should have no issue getting approved by the government. Now another interesting thing to take away from this, or at least something else I noticed, which is again in his first paragraph, is Phil Spencer refers to this as an acquisition, and in previous videos that I've broke down on previous interviews, he has specifically said the opposite. He says don't call this like a purchase or anything, this is a partnership, only this he's calling 
calling it an acquisition, and an acquisition doesn't really sound all that much like a partnership. It sounds more like a purchase. So it seems like he's flip-flopping a bit here with his wording, and now that time is progressing, he seems to be stepping away from the friendly glove-touching of this Bethesda thing and just straight up calling it an acquisition, which is more of a purchase than a partnership, at least in my opinion, just judging by the way that he changed his wording on this topic. Now, I do expect Phil Spencer to continue to get more interviews in the future and to actually be asked about this Bethesda and Microsoft exclusivity again and again and again. In, but I kind of think that we're going to see his responses from this point forward be more or less the same thing as what we're seeing here. He'll just say he can't talk about it in full detail right now because the purchase, the acquisition, whatever, isn't finalized yet, and that's probably all he will say. I'm sure from this point forward he'll be very careful with his wording, but like I just said, the wording in this interview kind of gets me worried because his wording was strangely different than the stuff he's said before. He specifically says he can't talk about how he would dictate any future things with Robert Altman and Todd Howard or just Bethesda in general because that is illegal. He doesn't say he never plans on dictating anything, so he apparently might be doing some dictating in the future. And while Bethesda and Microsoft exclusivity is certainly a pretty strong possibility, unlike what a lot of other websites and stuff have been trying to say, it hasn't been confirmed yet. This statement in this interview is even more evidence to support that fact that there is no confirmation about future Bethesda and Microsoft exclusivity because that would be illegal. So Forbes can stop their clickbait articles. There is no confirmation in any way, shape, or form, but it is definitely possible, especially with the wording used in this specific interview. At the beginning of this situation, I may have said I don't foresee there being much Bethesda and Microsoft exclusivity. However, my opinion is changing as the dynamic of this situation changes and more interviews are going down. While it's still not confirmed, the possibility is even stronger. However, I would imagine that major titles like The Elder Scrolls Six and Starfield would be cross-platform, meaning still on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. The Bethesda Game Studios community is just very, very large, and with a game especially as large as The Elder Scrolls VI, you'd be missing up on a huge missed opportunity for extra money by not putting this over on the PS5. Yes, Microsoft has said they don't need to recoup their money, their $7.5 billion spent on this Bethesda acquisition by putting any games on the PlayStation, but, I mean, they're still a business, and not only would PlayStation probably pay a set fee just to be able to sell The Elder Scrolls 6 and potentially even Starfield on the PS5, but Microsoft could get a large percentage of those sales on top of that, and it would be like sticking it to Sony on an even deeper level by making them pay for the rights to get one of their exclusives, which Microsoft I don't think has ever tried to do before. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but it's just another interesting take on this situation. It's my personal opinion on how I think things might go. I think we will definitely see some Bethesda and Microsoft exclusivity for titles like maybe Wolfenstein 3, probably a lot of future Fallout 76 content and just other Bethesda games in general, but Starfield and The Elder Scrolls 6 and other huge, huge titles like that, I kind of still have the feeling we will see beyond the PS5 as well. Either way, I'm still recovering from my rock joint or Daedric throat disease or whatever I have. I'm sure my voice is starting to sound more and more like Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2, so that's pretty much going to end today's video. I did talk about everything I wanted to talk about anyway, and as always, what I want to know is, what do you think about all of this? Let me know what you think down in the comments comments below. If you liked the video, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notifications on. and helps the channel out a lot greatly. And this video was brought to you by the following amazing people. If you want to get a video shout out like this, you can support the channel over on Coffee, Patreon, or here on YouTube as an exclusive channel member. And links for all of this and more are down in the description below. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when we're one day closer to Cyberpunk 2077. I cannot wait for that game.